Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com here. Hurricane Outlook and Discussion, off-season edition, of course. Going to do a special update today. I want to talk about a couple of big weather features coming up. Unfortunately, not something that I can go out and be a part of, but I want to make you aware of it, and these areas are going to be in uh, Newfoundland, Atlantic Canada region, and the Pacific Northwest of the United States. A couple of big storm systems to talk about. So let's get on with it, shall we? Um, looking at the satellite imagery for today, the visible satellite loop, courtesy of Tropical Tidbits. A couple of features to point out here that will be in play, especially for this system that's going to affect up here, uh, mainly the Newfoundland region. Uh, you got all this energy coming up out of Mexico, the subtropics here, or the subtropical jet, and that is energy, what we call the southern branch of the jet stream, or just the southern branch. And then there's energy diving out uh, here, coming out of the Rockies, and you're going to get a low pressure area that's going to form. And then you got the northern jet stream up here, and all that's going to combine to create quite the nor'easter. And there's a little storm system right there, pretty potent. Uh, we're going to get another one that's going to form and head up this way over the next several days. And it looks like it could be another stout, big-time storm uh, with the potential for very heavy snow, very uh, strong winds, coastal impacts, etc. Uh, again, for Atlantic Canada, mainly Newfoundland up here, uh, and to some extent Nova Scotia. Not, though, not for the Northeast United States. You're going to get left out of this system, uh, unfortunately. Well, it's, it's all in how you look at it. If you like blizzards and nor'easters, then you're going to be disappointed, put it that way. And if you just assume have a calm weather pattern, then for the most part, especially when you're talking about a big storm system, uh, you, you have nothing to worry about. This is going to bypass you. So let's take a look at the GFS. This is a different perspective than you're used to me showing. This is um, Southeast Canada, basically. Here's Newfoundland right here. I'll outline that for you just to get everybody's bearings. Uh, here's Nova Scotia. Uh, here's the Gulf of Maine over here. There's Cape Cod just to get your uh, your bearings, your geographic, to get your center, as they'd say. So let's move this out through time. Scroll this to where I can get to the little arrows there. And uh, watch what happens. We'll move this out. Let's get to the where I can see the dates. Dur, dur, dur. There we go. Um, so we move this out into time. There's 48 hours, and there comes the storm. You can see it there. This is by Saturday night into Sunday, and then uh, just south of, well, fairly far to the south of Nova Scotia. And then, boom, it really starts to bomb out. And the way this is coded, uh, Levi Cowan, uh, tropicaltidbits.com, Dr. Cowan, as it is now, Ph.D. Uh, the blue, of course, is snow, and the green and the darker colors uh, of green and then yellows and reds would indicate heavier precip and the bottom line looks like this storm bombs out again between Nova Scotia and Newfoundland not as strong as the last one but it looks like it makes a direct impact the low pressure area crossing uh, through Newfoundland and look at all those isobars uh, packed together like that that shows you that it's going to be very windy and that'll blow the snow into drifts again, uh, but it doesn't look like it'll be quite as severe as the last storm, or that big uh, blockbuster that went through. Uh, but that's winding up pretty good there. You know, low pressure down into the low 970s. There's 972, 971, 968, and then off it goes from there. That wraparound, cold northwest wind will be blowing across Newfoundland, and uh, even parts of Nova Scotia here when it's all said and done. So just wanted to point this out, making sure you're aware of it, that it does look like a potent storm system once again, and it's going to get its start there. Uh, again, at about the 72-hour mark, it starts to get going, uh, definitely in eastern Nova Scotia, and then about the 84-hour mark, full-on, big-time storm again, for Nova Scotia between days three and four. Coming up, latter part of the weekend, early part of Monday. Uh, yuck. So be ready, all right? Whatever you got to do, uh, one heck of a winter for you guys. And as you notice, again, here along the Capes, uh, Cape Ann down to Cape Cod and elsewhere, no impacts to speak of 
as this nor'easter does not get uh, going in phase, as it's called, until late in the game. And so the impacts will be up here. So I'll tell you what, if you want to watch the Super Bowl, uh, which is Sunday, and you're in Newfoundland, if you're into that, um, you, you might not have power in some places. Put it that way. We'll see. That's Sunday afternoon, Sunday night. But anyway, so there you go. I wanted to focus for our friends here in Atlantic Canada. I wish I could go up there for it. It's very expensive to do so, especially at the last minute. Logistically speaking, it's hard to do. So I'll do the next best thing, at least talk about it. And I do have some friends up there. A couple of our uh, supporters, our patrons, live up there as well. And they can provide some insight for us. But the main thing is just to keep you aware. And that includes our friends in the Pacific Northwest. We have several of our longtime and uh, very loyal uh, patrons, supporters. What did I call it the other day? Um, crowdfunding advocates. That was the term I used. Uh, and just general followers, you know, from all over the world. But you guys up here in the Pacific Northwest uh, don't want to ignore you. There's Washington State, and then you get down here to Oregon. Right there, there's the state of Oregon. There's Washington. Here's Idaho and, you know, Montana. And so that's your packed Northwest, right? And you guys have had a wet winter. You know, the, uh, the Sierra. Nope, not quite. The Sierra is down here. The Cascade Range and the Intermountain West, uh, the Olympics, very much especially on the windward side where the moisture is called orographic lift, uh, you've had a lot of rain, and that's great for the uh, long-term sustainability of the area. You know, you need that moisture snowpack that will eventually melt away and become fresh water supply. Uh, all of that, the whole hydrologic cycle, very important. And it's going to continue. And, of course, as mere mortal human beings, we have to deal with these storm systems. And you know, that includes Vancouver coming out of British Columbia there. In British, British Columbia, the storm system's not just affecting Washington and Oregon, but the B.C. coast as well. So both ends, it looks like Canada, <laughs> bookended by storms here. Um, British Columbia as well as um, Atlantic Canada, for what it's worth. Um, and, you know, I just thought of that, that it's actually both sides of, of the country. So there you go, British Columbia all the way over to Nova Scotia and beyond. But this storm system moves in. This is just a look at the next several days, and it's one storm after another. And you know what, let's just go back to the beginning. Hour zero, roughly. Well, it starts at hour six. As I scroll through, you see these storms just parading in one after the other over the next several days. Um, so just be aware of that. Some flooding issues could be more prevalent because of this, you know, the relentless assault of storm after storm across this region. Boy, I bet it's beautiful out there in the Rockies of uh, British Columbia, and again, in the Olympics, the Olympic Range and the Cascades. Ugh, that would be awesome to see that. So, Chris, I'm talking to you, buddy, out there in Washington, and Chris knows who he is. I uh, want some pictures from me. If you can provide them, sir, that would be great. Uh, one of our patrons out there. Uh, and as such, there are uh, flood watches up for the northwest corner of Washington State. Storm uh, warning, I guess, for the offshore waters well offshore of the eastern part of the United States, uh, probably related to that storm system that's going to eventually develop over the next few days. Uh, but, hey, look, the rest of the lower 48 is, by and large, free and clear of any problems. So if you're heading down to Miami for the Super Bowl, what is it, 54, something like that? Um, good travel weather for now. Uh, the storm system does take shape over the next few days and cuts up this way. In fact, let me go back to the GFS. Let me just show you that real quick. And we'll go to the eastern U.S. version and get rid of the telestration. And I can show you how this evolves, maybe, over the next few days. Uh, this is the current map as we go out through time. Uh, there's the storm system taking shape. Let's go back here. For some reason, it was too far back. Uh, there we go. There's today through Friday. And the storm takes shape well off the coast of the United States there. So, yeah, Super Bowl weekend down in Florida. Just wanted to clarify. Looking good. No worries there. Um, heavy precip, just looking at the quantitative precipitation forecast. 
when you see golds, you know, people think of gold as being, yeah, winning, right? I want a gold. Well, when you see yellows and golds and oranges or whatever in a precept map, that's usually not good. Uh, you win first place for heavy precept, but that could lead to problems. And over the next seven days, five to seven days, again, the Pacific Northwest, kind of wet in the southeast, but it does clear out this weekend for you all that might be traveling down to the greater Miami area for the big game. Um, enjoy that. Have fun. Um, and that's it. So, again, you know, we keep you uh, hurricane ready during hurricane season. That's my main forte, hence the hurricane graphic. And this is the hurricane outlook and discussion. But since we are in the off season, we do keep our eyes on any potential big weather makers. And that is part of the, old, the uh, idea of keeping you weather aware, right? Hurricane ready, weather aware. That's the slogan we're going with for this year. So there you go. Uh, that is it for me for today. Be aware of it in Atlantic Canada. Let us know what's happening. Hit me up on YouTube in the comments if you're up there. I'd love to hear from you this weekend and see how things turned out. You can also tag me on Twitter, at Hurricane Track, and any of our patrons on Patreon that live there or the Pacific Northwest. Hey, we're in the global social networking weather geek era where you can share the weather just do it safely. That's the number one priority above all else. Secondly, shoot it horizontal. If you take pictures or video, please don't do it vertical. <laughs> please. It doesn't look good that way, especially when you're shooting amazing weather phenomenon. It's best done in the horizontal, just like you're going to go see a big blockbuster movie on the movie screen. So there's some advice for you. Have a great rest of your Thursday. As always, thanks for watching. Uh, I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with you early next week. We'll see how everything shakes out with these storms. And we'll take a look at the normal off-season stuff early next week.